This from uh, Jeff Passan of ESPN, outfielder Lewis Roberts deal. Chicago White Sox can max out, max out at $88 million over eight years. Uh, the deal guarantees $50 million for the first six, includes $20 million club options, 2026. 20, 20, that's, that's the future. Look at 2027. That's yeah. like sci-fi or something. That's good. good. <laughs> There's a $2 million buyout on the option. So it's a, a six-year deal for 50. There's two years. It could be so eight years for 88. Uh, Luis Robert uh, going into his age 22 season. Uh, number three overall prospect, Evan, is what they're saying. 376 on base. Slug 624 at AA and AAA last year. Guy looks like a real star and he gets extended. This is the new wave. It's been happening a long time, but it's happening more and more now. It is happening more and more now. And I sometimes worry. We talk a lot about like what the new labor market is now or people adjusting based on the last couple of off seasons you do get concerned with somebody like Robert and obviously he wanted the deal because he wanted security for his family and for his future and now that's all set and taken care of he had a major 26 million dollar um, signing uh, deal when he came out of Cuba um, but when you're the number three prospect in baseball you have to be willing to bid on yourself I would hope um, I, if, if this guy turns into half the player that people expect him to um, he's going to be leaving a lot of money on the table um, mm -hmm. as, as this contract uh, transpires through arbitration and through free agency. Yeah, these deals, again, this is uh, some, it's, it's real money. In the real world, it's real money. Yeah. And you get rich because <clears throat> now this is, this is actually rich. Um, you know, like, there's a lot of leagues that think, oh, you're rich. No, you're not rich. You're fluid. This is, this is rich. But it, I just see it as such a good deal for the clubs. The methodology, yeah. it makes sense for the clubs. You know, you I see more than that? I, I actually don't love these deals from the club's perspective. I love the Acuna deal. I love the, if the Tatis, if they get that done, I so love that. So you want to see deal. him play one year and give I'd him like hundred million? See, I'd like to be sure uh, because if you sign someone off a of minor league, someone is not going to get the fair value, whether it's the player or the team. It, it's impossible to approximate what a guy's value is right, but of I a double entry. But this deal seems reasonable to me. Uh, I, you know, I didn't like the Singleton deal. Uh, a lot, some people thought that was a great deal for the for the Jonathan Singleton. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't love that deal. Uh, the, Evan White, to, to me, that deal doesn't make any sense. I mean, good for Evan White that he was able to get that deal. Uh, you know, he's a player that projects as a solid major league player. I, to me, I, I would let the guy play that out. My now, Luis Robert is is one of the top talents in mm -hmm. the minor leagues. I, the, the White Sox can't go wrong with this. So I, I mean, I right, understand. So you are I'm You're okay good. with Luis Robert. Generally, I don't like these deals at all. But I think you, I think you hit on that. It's like, it's like, boy, I'd like to see him prove it. But then it costs you $100 million. If you can take the bid, if you say, oh, we'll take the chance now, you haven't done it. You don't know if you can do it. You don't know if you're going to get hurt. How's $50 million? And it's sold. I think this is all good for the club. Yeah, and they've done it twice because they did it with Eloy Jimenez as well. And I think what the White Sox are doing here is everything's kind of about timing. Right. Like like they're very active in the free agent market, bringing in veterans to play good veterans to play with these guys. What is the time they're doing it? They're doing it at a time where there's two complete rebuilding teams in their division in the Tigers and the Royals and a time where the Indians might be kind of at the end of a period of where they were the dominant team in the division. They might have to even more seriously now consider trading Francisco Lindor. They do it at a time where the team that is the dominant team in their city, the Chicago Cubs, are not spending money this offseason when they're trying to make some inroads to regain, uh, you know, season ticket holders, attendance, TV, radio, et cetera. So this is a moment to seize, and they're seizing it, and I admire them for trying it. It kind of ties back to the first segment we do, which is why are teams more active now? Because some of them are in the White Sox situation. Right, uh, and, and getting after it. And, and I, I think anybody that can start for you, pay them. You know, pay them, make them. Well, he's going to be a star. In there. He, yeah, he right, will be a star. I mean, right, that, but that's, a that's little, even more so of a I'm okay with this deal. No. But the, the ones where a guy's in double A and he looks okay, I, that I don't understand. Sign him up, that I understand. You like All right, man, sign, sign him up. If you think he, if you, <laughs> you draft, develop, he's our guy, we're ready to put him in the major leagues, pay him. Pay him. And, and you save money if he turns out to be Andrew McCutcheon. You save it.